Alright everybody, hello and welcome as always, I'm Sean, and this is In The Mix, episode number 5, it's always tough saying goodbye at the end of these one season wonder saves, but the final episode with Bayer Leverkusen in the last two games of the season. Now, very excited for this episode because it's still all to play for, we are in a scenario where we can still effectively win the league title, but we need some results to go our way, it's incredibly tight, there are teams around us that are very good as well, let's not waste too much time, let's jump straight into the game and see the scenario for the final day of the season. So, as you guys can see, just above wrong hand, my head here, we are currently sitting second position in the division. 32 games played, 19 wins, 8 draws, and 5 defeats. Plus 35 goal difference is probably one of the bigger things that we need to get remember as we go through this. But 65 points with 2 games remaining. Currently top of the division, Red Bull Leipzig. They have won the same amount of games as us. The only difference is that they've only lost 3 and picked up 2 extra draws for 67 points. We have a vastly superior goal difference against them. A or to them, I should say, of plus 12. But the other one that we have to keep an eye on is Borussia Dortmund just behind us here. Also on 65 points, one singular goal behind us. And if we go to the big league table, you can see it's only because we've conceded one less goal than they have. Now, the run home is interesting for each of the sides. I'll go with Leipzig first, just because they are currently top. They're playing Mönchengladbach, who are in 12th position, and Wolfsburg, who are in 10th. Now, Wolfsburg beat us this season. They've also beaten Borussia Dortmund. My hope, my prayer... Fingers, toes, eyes, arms, ears, whatever cross that you've got in front of you right now is that one of these teams can get a draw against Leipzig and then we go above them on goal difference. For Dortmund, they're playing Wolfsburg and Werder Bremen. Wolfsburg maybe can do us a favour in that one. I would really rather that Dortmund just win their games, but we're going to have to keep an eye on with this Dortmund side who are capable, as you can see, like 4 nils, 3 nils, 2 nils, jumping out at you here, that they don't beat teams by the same amounts that we beat them by. Otherwise, goal difference is going to come into it and they can potentially leapfrog us if Leipzig drop points and they score more than we do in the final two games of the year. Now for us, and the two games that you're going to see in this episode, we're going to play Hoffenheim, who are currently in 7th position, and Freiburg, who are down in 13th. Now, since yesterday's episode, if you haven't gone back and watched it, go and check it out. What are you doing? We've, of course, lost 2-0 to Dortmund in what would have been a great fixture to pick up points, and then a nil-all draw against Leipzig as well. We were kind of stuck in a bad little run of form here. You can see with that defeat to Dortmund, that draw with Leipzig, we then rotated quite heavily for a Hamburger in the German Cup. I didn't really care about the German Cup, so we played all of our backup players. I didn't make any subs. I just made them run out the game. And we did lose 4-2, but it was kind of one of those jammy goals. One defender cleared it into Lars Bender, and it went in. They got there like sealer in the 89th minute because we had pushed forward quite a bit. We then lost 3-1 to Eintracht Frankfurt, and I thought we need to change something. We're going to mix it up just a little bit. And tactically, we adjusted both of our out-of-possession instructions to be wide instead of narrow. We played most of the year on a narrow structure, and what I think kept happening is that as the three centre-backs sort of switched across to one side to cover the ball, there was always that back stick ball open. So then we made that transition to wide, and it actually worked really well since then. We did that for both our attacking and positive mentalities. We've been using attacking as like our default setting in this run home. And form picked up really quickly. We got a 7-1 victory over Fortuna Dusseldorf, our biggest win of the season. We did lose 3-2 to Paderborn, but this was again one of those kind of jammy games that could have gone either way. Then we beat Mainz 1-0. Did I just do a little German accent accidentally? As I've said, Mainz had a nil-all draw with Augsburg. A convincing 4-1 victory over Cologne at the time. They were second in the division. They have dropped off a little bit in the like kind of run home, but a very, very good performance from everybody. A good firm at 4-0 victory against Union Berlin, which unfortunately relegated them to the two Bundesliga for next season. A good 2-0 win against Schalke, and then we just ran into the machine that is Bayern Munich. They have struggled this year. They haven't put a good consistent run of results together, uh, but Leon Goretzka got a really good goal. He picked the ball up on halfway and dribbled like pretty much the length of the pitch. Or well, half the length of the pitch, I guess, if you're on halfway. But you know what I mean. He went on an amazing run and he found a good finish. And we just couldn't find the back of the net. Our defensive line played well. Our midfield probably struggled to get on top of theirs, given the quality that they've got. But, you know, losing 1-0 to Bayern Munich isn't the worst thing in the world. We did turn it around and beat Montreal back at 5-1 before getting revenge against Wolfsburg for our first initial defeat of the season. A 2-0 victory away from home. And last time out, a 4-0 victory against 10 men Werder Bremen. A very, very good performance. Everybody in fantastic form. Good spread of goal scorers and everything. I'm hopeful. Anything can happen when you load up the game, but I'm hopeful we can carry on what has been a good run of form with six points in this episode and finish the season as strong as possible. And then we just have to hope that other stuff goes our way at the same time. As far as the squad's concerned, you can see there's a whole bunch of different unhappy players here, and that's been the real challenge in the second half of the season. Pretty much all of these guys that you can see here are set to... What am I trying to find? They're agreed playing time as squad player. I do that at the start of every season so that everyone knows who the starting 11 is and who's not to try and manage expectations. But like 
at various points throughout the season. Bender's been unhappy. We had Diaby be unhappy for a while. Sven Bender's unhappy. Baumgartner, Demabe, Alario wanted to leave on loan. Amiri's quite upset. Like, there's a variety of different players here that have really struggled being a squad player, and that's something that you'll have to keep in mind if you do your own bio level cues and save. But the starting 11, doing fantastically well. We have secured a top three finish and Champions League football for next season, so we've already gotten our bids or our budgets for next season 15.79 million transfer budget remaining and 169k a week in wages available. I'm going to try and bring in Fiat up and Dan Axel Zagadou on permanent deals just because I like to kind of do that towards the end of a save to set up, you know, the version of Bayer Leverkusen, which will continue out into cyberspace and win the next five Champions Leagues. And I'm hopeful we get a fair bit of prize money for our finish in the league itself because we are in horrible financial strife. I haven't spent any money this season. We paid £5 million for Josh Xerxes up front. There's another £10 million over the next three years. But like even with that whole transfer, if you said that was on me, we've still dropped a further... 45 million pound in debt which is absolutely insane so unless there's like a big spike coming here to get us out of the red and they planned for that the club is not projecting to be profitable at any point in the near future which is a concern and again just something that you guys will have to keep in mind you're probably not going to have a whole bunch of cash for the first few seasons if you're going to do a long-term save with Bayer Leverkusen more than enough talking from me though let's jump forward now and look at the two lineups for the game against Hoffenheim all right, so this is the lineup that we are going with. It's been pretty consistently our starting 11 throughout the course of the season. We've dropped players here and there just relating to form and, you know, like other squad players demanding to play at various points. Uh, but Radeke in goal, Zagadou, Tapsoba, and Tar as the back three. They have been excellent. They do have the best defensive record in the competition, which I do forget sometimes. The one real change we've made or tweaked to it is that Tapsoba has become the covering central defender. Zagadou being that left-footed centre-back, he plays on the left-hand side now. It helps us build our attacks a little bit more quickly. Uh, Aaron Giz has the highest average rating for the season. He has been excellent all year. He'll play alongside Palacios at the base. Paulini on the left wing, Bailey on the right, Havertz at the 10, and Xerxes and Arp up front. It's a very, very good lineup. I've enjoyed playing with them quite a bit. Looking over at Hoffenheim, they're playing a similar structure. It's not miles away. They've got three at the back as well, but two wing backs instead of the wingers that we have, and a flat midfield three instead of the triangle that we've got positioned here. They don't have, jumping out at me, a leading scorer at the moment. They've got Katara back here, their right fullback. We're playing as a right wing back a little bit further forward. He looks solid physically, but nothing too bad in terms of his technical or mental attributes. Geiger in the middle here is their leading assist maker for the season. He looks like a German youth international, a solid deep lying playmaker with all right potential ability. But you'd think at 21 that might drop off relatively quickly. But nobody on this pitch with that ball next to it, like we've got here for Xerxes, saying they're the leading scorer. Kramerich up top. Only has four goals in the league so far this season. And then they've also got De Boer, who's only got five. So they're probably a little bit different to us, where we score quite regularly, struggling to put the ball in the back of the net. We're going to passionately tell everyone the media have given a lot of credit lately. That seems to be consistently working at the moment to motivate the team. And the other thing we need to keep an eye on are the other matches. First highlight of the game, ball with Bailey to Paulinho back post, and it's a wonderful header back across goal. Tenth goal of the season. I didn't go through it when we did like our game preview or our season preview or review or whatever you want to say, but the spread of goal scorers this season has been excellent. I think we've got Xerxes got about 12 goals. Feet Arp's got 11. Paulinho's got now 10. I think Leon Bailey's probably close to getting 10 goals this season as well. Zagadou's chipped in with about seven. We've had Aaron Giz chip in with seven or eight from set pieces. And I think Kramerich has just scored, but it's going to be ruled back for offside. He did look at when the initial shot came back in. That one is indeed ruled out, which is good to see. But just like as far as having an attacking side that has a good spread of goal scorers, it's very well balanced. Ball back in there from the corner, hits the crossbar before it's headed away. Angus is going to put it back in. Oh, I'm sorry, Jonathan Tarr is going to send it back to Palacios. And now the ball into the corner for Bailey. Near post ball towards Fiat Arp. What a cross that is. And there, just as we're saying it, Fiat Arp, 10th goal of the season for him. We've scored probably about 50 goals from across five different players, which is just crazy balance. Tar, good ball back there for Palacios. He just hooks it into the corner for Leon Bailey to chase. Does very well. And on his right foot, not his favorite foot, a great ball towards the near post. And Fiat Arp gets in front of the defensive line and clips that header beyond Oliver Bauman. And six minutes in, we have gone top of the division. Leipzig, of course, still drawing their game against Gladbach. We need that to continue. And then we've scored a third. Leon Bailey again with a wonderful assist. Jonathan Tar at back post gets his second of the year. A very good ball in there from the corner and a well-timed run from the big center back. We'll check it out here in three dimensions. Just hangs that ball into a good area. There's a lot of defensive players there for Hoffenheim, but none of them get to it. Tar rising above everybody and powering home for the three-goal advantage. Does look like Leipzig have taken the lead. Timo Werner scoring in the ninth minute for Mönchengladbach. And then keeping an eye as well. Wolfsburg a 1-0 up against Dortmund, which does do us a favor. But in reality, 
We really need Monch and Gladback to try and find a comeback. Ball towards back post here. It's clipped back stick and posh with the header for Hoffenheim just over the crossbar. Deep throwing now, right hand side for Hoffenheim. This might be where they cause us concern because we don't have anyone to go directly to the overlapping wing back. Ball sent in the corner for Xerxes. It's been cut out though by the Hoffenheim defense. Bauman forward to Hubner. Oh, it's one of those highlights. Yeah, it didn't cross the line. We know it didn't cross the line. Ball into the corner. De Boer, Staffelides. Leon Bailey wins it back in a great area on the right hand side. Immediate looks to cut back inside on his left foot, and he goes to strike. It's a wonderful save from Bauman in the Hoffenheim goal. I had Oliver Bauman in a Freiburg save, and I think like FM 13 or something like that, and he was absolutely fantastic as a young keeper. 10 minutes remain in the half. We're just going to use our Get Creative shout. We really shouldn't complain about being 3-0 up at this point, but if we can get another goal, it will help our goal difference tremendously if Dortmund do mount to come back, or if Leipzig do eventually drop a point. Geiger with the switch out here to Grilich. All over to the right-hand side, Katara back. Now looks for the switch to Staffelides. They're getting men forward now, Hoffenheim. A bit more caution to the wind, and De Boer thankfully puts it straight at Radekeef. He does very well to save and hold. Bailey from the corner towards Fiat Arp. A good flick on header again, just over the crossbar. We're creating quite a bit here in the first half, getting a lot of opportunities against this Hoffenheim back line. And at halftime, 3-0 up. Hoffenheim have had eight shots, four on target, 55% possession. For Leverkusen, 10 shots, seven on target, 45% of the ball. We are going to passionately say, very happy the way things are going. Keep it up, lads. And everybody's responded positively to that. As we always do, we'll give it 15 minutes, then we'll have a look at subs, form, fitness, whatever else. Leipzig are 2-0 up at halftime. 34th minute penalty to Team Burner. Kind of getting them one hand on the trophy, so to speak. Maybe we get a big halftime team talk from watching Gladbach and they can bail us out a little bit. That would be great. Ball comes forward here. Aaron Giz wins it back, as he so often does. Havertz with a great switch out towards Leon Bailey. He's going to look for the cutback here towards the middle. And Xerxes just smashed that one against the crossbar before it heads out for the goal kick. Corner to be taken here again. Been good for set piece scenarios. Falls to Paulinho. Now Aaron Giz from the edge of the area with the strike. Grilich manages to get it away for Hoffenheim. Is that the end of the highlight? We're going to see some more here. Tapsober recovers in midfield. Forward to Palacios. He hasn't got much going on in that corner. He's lost out to Geiger. It's closed down well by Jonathan Tarr though. Recovers possession. Now taps over again. Aaron Giz all the way back to Radeke. Work it to the left-hand side. We do through Zagadou. Aaron Giz out left now to Paulinho. In 1v1 situations, he is a good dribbler. He looks for Xerxes into the channel. Hasn't got much to work with, so he cuts it back to Havertz. Now Bailey, feet up from the edge of the area. Wonderful finish from Fiat up. Really coming to his own in the second half of this season. It took him forever to score, but since he got his first one, he's been very, very good. Xerxes with a good hold-up play. Brings it back to Havertz. Nice little triangle here between Havertz, Bailey, and Fiat up. And as soon as he up sees it, he just hits it. Bauman gets a hand to it, but can only force it into the roof of the net. And four goals isn't bad. We're going to have to figure out what we're going to do for our subs here. We've got condition to keep an eye on. We might just swap the two wingers. Not because they've played poorly, just to try and keep them fresh for the last game of the season. We want to make sure that we win our games, even if the other results don't go our way. Winger on support for Bellarabi. Diaby will go to a winger on attack. Gives us a little bit more width in transition as you'd think Hoffenheim start coming, looking to try and get a consolation goal. Use a get creative shout. Old faithful after half an hour or after an hour. It always seems to work. Ball back to Bauman here from the goal kick. Rudy into Grilich. The press in midfield's good. They can't seem to get it out at the moment. Posh goes long and Zagadu does very well to bring it down in traffic. He's lost out to Kramerich there though. And on the right-hand side, he's going to have to try and pick out the right ball. Good tackle from Tapsoba, but it falls to Rudy in midfield. Switch out now to Staffelidis, the overlapping fullback. Cut back towards back stick. Diaby with a good header. He's done well to get back goal side there. Rudy looks to reset and switches again out to Staffelidis. We're committing too far on one side. Ball in towards Kramerich. So Hoffenheim pulled one back. I'll take a 4-1 win if you had offered it to me before the game. But really, we want to try and keep clean sheets as best we can throughout the course of the year. Great switch, to be fair, by Rudy. And Staffelidis just waits for the defenders to commit, puts it near post. Kramerich with a powerful header. Not really anything you could uh, get upset about from a keeping perspective. Maybe we could have stayed goal side, but it was Zagadou coming across from the far side to uh, close that one out. Aaron Gears, deep ball towards back stick. Zagadou nearly a chance to get one immediately back just over the crossbar. It remains 2-0 in the other game. We've got 10 minutes remaining. We might make our last sub. As far as average ratings go, Xerxes, he hasn't played too well. We'll just give him a bit of a spell. Fiat Art will move into a pressing, um, an advance forward, sorry. And Volan can come on as a pressing forward for the last 10 minutes. See if Art can't finish off that hat trick. We'll just use our demand more shout as well for the last 10 minutes or so. Give everyone some focus through to full time. But if uh, Hoffenheim score here, they've got the ball in a good area. Rudy with the switch out to Katara back. Cuts it back to Kramerich, and it's a wonderful save from Radeke. I was about to say, if they score here, it's going to set up a pretty tense last few minutes in this contest. Staffelidis with the corner. Radeke comes out and claims a 1v1 at the back if we can get it forward quickly. But instead, the highlight comes to an end. 
Staffelides, wide left free kick. Goes near post, Hubner straight at Radeke. And an immediate ball out there to Moose Diaby, who is an excellent dribbler if he can get goal side of the defender. And Anna tracks him quite well and recovers the ball for Hoffenheim. We're into the 90th minute now. Hubner forward to Rudy. Bellarabi wins back possession in a good area. Can we find Fiat Art for the hat trick? Well, he's closed down well by the uh, Hoffenheim defence before it's cleared. Belfodil now on for Hoffenheim. Staffelides back to Hubner. Ball into Onana, another sub fresh off the bench. Kramerich sends it out wide right for Katara back. Just stand him up, boys. Don't do anything silly. And Belfodil's header eventually clips the crossbar on its way over. Four minutes additional time. We're through that now as the referee calls full time. Good 4-1 win. We've done our part at least. 14 shots, 8 on target, 55% possession for Hoffenheim. 19 shots, 11 on target, 45% of the ball for Bayer Leverkusen. Passionately, very happy with the result and the way that you guys played. I think that Leipzig won their game. They did indeed a 2-0 victory for them against Monchin Gladbach. We've got one more opportunity and we have to hope that Wolfsburg can get a good result. They drew with Borussia Dortmund, which does do us a favour. Pretty much guarantee, it kind of, it doesn't mathematically guarantee us, but it pretty much guarantees us at least a top two finish. But it all comes down to the last day of the season. Fiat Art gets the Man of the Match award, which is fantastic. Give him a bit of praise before we jump forward. And then the other thing I'm going to do, even though we have a full week before the last game of the season, I'm going to give everyone that's going to start a bit of a rest just to try and boost their conditioning up towards 100%. Magic of editing, though, we're going to jump forward to the game against Freiburg now. All right, just like that, we are a week ahead. Thankfully, we got through the training week without anybody getting injured or anything like that. Demba Bay picked up a bit of a knock. He drops off the bench, but that's not really anything to worry about. It is a full-strength lineup. Interestingly, it switched from being Charles Aaron Giz, who was our highest average rated player for the season, to Leon Bailey. That good performance last time out has just put him above him on average rating for the season. But otherwise, we are on cha- unchanged. Now, looking at Freiburg, they're playing a very similar 4-2-3-1 to what we're currently using at Isle of Man. But again, same as last time, they've got no leading assist maker or leading scorer playing in this match. I don't know if they're suspended or injured or what the situation is, but it might be an understrength Freiburg side. Christian Gunter on the left back spot here. One German cap to his name. It doesn't look the greatest. Two-star current ability, two-star potential, but he doesn't look horrible. For a two-star player, it's not the worst attribute set that I've ever seen for a wing back. A bit further from him, Griffo on the left wing here. He looks a little bit more solid. A wide playmaker. Italian with one cap to his name as well. Good crossing ability. Actually, 17 corners, 17 free kick taking, 16 long shots, 16 crossing, 16 first touch. A very good technical player out there on that left-hand side. I think he'll be the main guy looking to uh, supply the forward. Hoffler in midfield here, their highest average rated player for the season. Just looks to be a straightforward central midfielder. A little bit more of a defensive side to his game, but some good mental attributes in there. And Volschmidt will be the man leading the line up top. He's only got, oh, he's got nine goals for the season. That's not terrible. 23-year-old, previously a German under-21 international. Solid, but not spectacular. We should be beating a side like Freiburg. The other thing we have to keep an eye on, fingers, toes, arms, eyes, ears, whatever you can cross, please cross them in the hope that Wolfsburg will uh, get the result in the other match. Uh, Patch that we're going to say, many have given a lot of credit lately. Go out there, give them the fans a performance to cheer for. That one just seems to consistently have worked this season. We want to position this so that we can see all of our other results. Throw in here, first one of the game, into Chang Hoon and Schmidt, the right back for Freiburg. Xerxes won the ball back in a great area, and then he does lose it straight back again. Schwallow puts it into midfield for Freiburg. Now out into midfield. Hoffler looks to switch it out. Paulinho with a great recovery. And if he can drag a defender here, we might be 3v3. And Xerxes with the finish there. 15th goal of the season for the man we picked up from Bayern Munich. He's been excellent. Like Considering he's 18 years of age still, and that it's his first real season uh, of senior football, to score 15 goals in the Bundesliga, very impressive. This is one of those things where it's like kind of hard to do a one season save because I do wonder if we had Xerxes for a couple more years, could we potentially push him to be like the best player or the best one of the best forwards in the game itself? All right, so as things currently stand, Wolfsburg still drawing with Leipzig. It does see us go top of the division. And just as I've said that, I've got to remember that Sports Interactive listen in on this microphone whenever I'm recording. It does look like Leipzig have taken a lead in their match. Ball all the way back here to Radeke in possession. It's gone long forward to Havertz in midfield. Back to Jonathan Tarr. Now all the way back to Radeke. Switch sides if you're going to receive it. Keeper, thank you. Goes to Zagadu now. Taps over. Aaron Gears. Palacios. Looks sends Xerxes into a channel. He's done well actually to recover it from the first touch from the fullback. Into Fiat Arp. He finds the finish. I think he was just offside as the ball was played in. And this one will get ruled out. But always good to see Xerxes and Arp combining the two forwards getting together there. Does look like Leipzig have taken the lead in their match. Corner here. Griffo to take. Goes back stick. Radeke does very well to come out and claim. We've got 2v2 on this left-hand side if we work the ball correctly. Xerxes looks to beat a man and play Paulinho in. 
He's got the ball down the left-hand side. Probably not a great area to be shooting in. Maybe look, could have looked for the cutback or the ball square across the six-yard box. But we get a resulting corner. Leon Bailey to take. We were handy from set pieces last time out. If we can work a good one here. Bailey eventually with the strike straight out Schwallow. Is this highlight going to continue? Looks like he was struggling to get up there for a second. He's thrown it out to Gunter. Ball out on the left-hand side. He's bursting forward. He hasn't got much to aim for in the middle, though. Just no one jump in or do anything silly. He's gone to square it up, and thankfully, we've managed to scramble it away. Xerxes now on the recovery. Paulinho's goal side, if he can release the ball, he doesn't. It's a bit of a selfish play there. He could have probably sent that winger into a 1v1 situation had he let go of the ball. Leipzig, Timo Werner scoring has taken them ahead of Wolfsburg. We need to hope Wolfsburg. If Wolfsburg find an equalizer, I will buy a Wolfsburg kit. Dortmund drawing nil all and have missed a penalty against Werder Bremen, but they're pretty much out of it as things currently stand. And we're through 30 minutes. We're going to use that get creative shout just before half time. If we get a second goal, it might put some pressure on Leipzig who have scored their second goal. I don't think we're going to have results go our way, unfortunately, but you've got to give Leipzig credit. They have been a machine in the second half of the season. Aaron Gears, back to Jonathan Tarr. Aaron Gears, Palacios, back to Tarr again. Not working the triangle nicely. Just wait for them to commit before we play that long ball forward. Tarr taps over, Palacios. Tarr taps over, Palacios. <laughs> back to Tarr, all the way back to Radke. Now on the left-hand side through Zagadou. Back to Radke again. We just seem to be trying to drag them up the pitch a little bit, playing that sort of almost vertical tiki-taka, which isn't something we're deliberately set out to do. Bailey's gone on a great run. If he maybe could have squared that one up to feed up at near post for the finish. Three minutes of additional time to be added on at the end of the first half here. And we're through that now. So we're one goal up. We've had 12 shots, six on target, 49% possession. Three shots, one on target, 51% the ball for Freiburg. Passionately. Happy with the performance so far. Keep it up. Let's just keep it as positive as we can. We have to hope that Wolfsburg can pull off a miraculous 2-0 recovery away from home at halftime. Klosterman getting the second goal for the Leipzig side. They're now 3-0 up. So, again, like as soon as I say these things out loud, the game just decides it's going to go in the opposite direction. But we are through an hour mark. We can make a couple of subs here. Based on performance, feet up. Struggling a little bit. We'll give Kevin Volland a farewell for the series and the save. Kai Havertz also struggling. We might bring on Nadiem Amiri, who hasn't played that much this season, to be honest. A signing from Hoffenheim, interestingly enough. I think there were two or three players in the Leverkusen squad picked up from Hoffenheim in the last year or so. But both Fiat Up and Kai Havertz, excellent young players, and they've been fantastic for us this season. We'll give them a bit of a spell for the final 30 minutes of the year. Gunter, good switch out to Chang Hoon here, who I think's moved to the right hand side. We do win it back though through Paulinho. Ball over the top here for the fullback, or Amiri, fresh off the bench, finds Voland. Could go on square one more time. Instead, he finds and finished himself. Seventh goal of the season for Kevin Voland. He has been excellent. Really, from a third choice striker, you just want them to get like half a dozen goals for the year. And he's only, he not started that many games. He's jumped in every now and then when Ark was struggling or when we couldn't get uh, Xerxes to score for that period. It's a good finish, to be fair to him. Gets it on his left peg, smashes it back across. Keep it kind of goes the wrong way a little bit. But that two goal advantage should be enough to seal it. Ball forward here with Hoffler. Aaron Giz is on a yellow card. He's going to have to be careful. Does win it back cleanly. And Paulinho sends Xerxes goal side. Can he square it up? Or is he going to go himself? He goes himself. Selfish option. Straight out Schwallow who saves and holds. Ball out wide right here towards Leon Bailey. Chris Gunter wins it back though. Bailey recovers possession in a great area. Can he get back on his left peg to find the finish? It's a ghost for pace instead of precision. And it's a good save from Schwallow. And Xerxes is eventually tackled for the throw in. Throw in. Left hand side now. Bailey to take. Xerxes plays a short one back to him. He beats a couple of challenges, looks to square it up before it's cleared away by the Freiburg defence. Zagadou will recover. He played a tap sober. It looks to send Paulinho into the corner. Nice knockdown header for Aaron Gears. Now back to Zagadou. Tap sober. This is what we do quite well. We just keep the ball across the back three. And then we wait until they commit a couple of men forward for the press. And then we look to try and exploit the space in behind. Radke finds Jonathan Tarr. Wing is going to commit now. Tap sober. Tarr back to Radke again. Just doing that vertical tiki taka, trying to trick them into playing the high press. Now we go forward a bit longer. Bailey with the ball, Kevin Volland. Palacios, switch out to Polino. Can he find the finish? It's a good effort, but Schwallow equal to it. Forces it over for another corner in this match. Bailey's going to take. He's going to look to wrap that left peg around. He goes short to Amiri instead, who goes for the first time strike, and it's closed down very well by the Freiburg fullback as the highlight comes to an end. Almost a useless highlight, you would say. Like, why show us the corner? Bailey with one in here, and Xerxes clipped the crossbar as it goes over for the goal kick. Wolfsburg pulled one back. It's now only 4-1 in that game. And they've missed a penalty as well. It's uh, not gone well for us in terms of uh, Leipzig dropping points, but we've done all we can. Jonathan Tarnia in possession from the throw-in. Aaron Gears with the ball. Looks for the switch. It's a poor effort. Schwallow comes out and claims. 
claims. I don't know why I've said it like that. I think I've lost the plot a little bit watching uh, Leipzig just smash goals into the back of the net in these last two matches. Long ball forward, taps over with the flick on header. The Miri to Angiz, now outright to Jonathan Tarr, who's going to try and get Bailey in a 1v1 situation. He's so good in these 1v1s. That pace acceleration just tears him away from players. Crossfield switch isn't great, though. Chang Hoon recovers for Freiburg and beats a man in midfield and goes past another one as well. He's on a little bit of a run here, and thankfully, the uh, drive, I think, was going wide, but Radke did quite well to uh, get it around the post. I know they've got a corner, but I just don't really care. We're going to make our last sub. Leon Bailey struggling. We'll give Bellarabi a bit of a farewell as well. He has been... One of those players that hasn't complained this season about his playing time. Happy to be a squad player. And at like three and a half stars, a very high quality squad player to have on hand. We'll demand more for the last few minutes here just to give everyone focus as we get towards the final whistle. Three minutes of additional time. Freiburg look to send the ball in the channel here. Jonathan Tarr should recover. Goes all the way back to Radeke. Long ball forward to Xerxes. Now out left to Paulinho. We've got runners in the middle if we can find him. Instead, he's going to go himself. He's beat a couple of men and gone for the strike. Swallow with an excellent save. Any icing on the cake here from the set piece. Aaron Giz to take the corner on the right-hand side. Looks back stick towards Agadou. The header straight at Schwallow in goal, though. We're through the three minutes of additional time now. The referee calls full time. In the end, 2-0 victors. 26 shots, 17 on target, 47% possession. 8 shots, 4 on target, 53% of the ball for Freiburg. I'm going to passionately tell everybody, very happy with the result and the way you played. And unfortunately, the results elsewhere just haven't gone our way. Leipzig win the division. 73 points plus 28 goal difference. We have plus 40 goal difference, which is very impressive. The best in the division and 71 points of our own. They win the Bundesliga. It was the game, a 3-0 victory against Bayern Munich, which was actually late on in the season if we look at the uh, Leipzig schedule. I thought maybe when I was looking at their like, run home, particularly after they lost 2-0 to Schalke, that maybe Bayern might roll them and give us an opportunity to leapfrog them. But they absolutely torched a Bayern side who struggled for consistency this year. And they've been a streaky team, have they? There's like a spot in here where they played seven or eight games without losing there's a spot earlier on in the season where they went undefeated for probably about 12 games there so they just kind of hung in early doors didn't have the greatest start to the year three consecutive draws before jumping up the table quite a bit final day heartache i would say it's more i'd be more upset about it if we had been top of the division and then dropped off on the final day that would be like bottles in the comment section type deal Xerxes gets the man of the match award in the last game of the season koku is sacked by munching gladback and somehow i'm still included in the sack race it's still a 200 to 1 odds it's unlikely but maybe that's taking in like our champions league performance which wasn't great shroud has been sacked at hoffenheim i'm 100 to 1 odds apparently for the sack race i don't understand it. like we finished second in the division we were about to win the bundesliga title at certain points uh in the last two games we'll give xerxes a bit of praise he has been excellent and we get 80 million pounds for a second place finish which is great it is going to put us back into a positive overall balance but in reality like it's not sustainable to be reliant on your uh, competition prize money each season. That's one thing that you'll have to keep an eye on. So a bit of a squad review. Josh Xerxes, the highest scorer for the season. His 15 goals in all competitions was very, very good for an 18-year-old player. And he's been fantastic. I definitely recommend picking him up for your own save if you're looking for an advanced forward. Maybe even one that you could like try and retrain as a tree cortista or a complete forward or a deep line forward if you want a bit more of a more versatile role. And quite a few of his stats and attributes are proving throughout the course of this season. So... I think he probably would get towards like five-star potential or five-star actual ability given the time and given the starts. Leon Bailey, another one I'll call out. He's been absolutely excellent. Four and a half-star current ability and four and a half-star potential, but he plays like a five-star player. Just very good in 1v1 situations, and it's always good to have that in your side, particularly from wide creative areas. Over on the other side as well, Paulinho. You forget he's only 19. We did set out to get as many wonder kids as humanly possible, and he's been excellent, jumping up from, I think, two and a half star ability at the start of the game to now three and a half star current ability. You'd think with a year or another year in the Bundesliga, he would get to be one of the uh, better wingers in world football. As far as the wonder kid count goes, we hit a point where we had seven briefly before we had tap sober turn 21. We're at six to end the season. Paulinho, Xerxes, Zagadou, Diaby, Havertz, and Arp. We have put in offers for Zagadou and Fiat Arp as well to try and bring them in, spend some of that money. And the other player I want to try and highlight is Charles Arangis. He has been absolutely fantastic this season. Just, I wasn't expecting anything. And to be honest, at the start of the season, when we looked at the squad, he was a player that I thought maybe we could sell him, get a bit of cash back. But he has been absolutely phenomenal. 7.5 average rating in the Bundesliga this season. Chips in with four goals, four assists. And I think quite a few additional, like, what would you call them? Like secondary assists or passes to assists from set-piece scenarios. Six player of the match awards, a phenomenal season from the Chilean. And even at 31, like he's a guy I think could do a job at like a proper Champions League contender club if you need sort of a midfield anchor in your shape. 
End of season awards, Aaron Gears, unsurprisingly, with 42% of the vote, gets the player of the season award, Leon Bailey and Palacios as the other two contenders there. Karim Demabe, I remember him scoring a cracking free kick at some point this season. I wonder if this is it. It was in the 7-1 victory against Fortuna Dusseldorf. It doesn't make the goal any less special. But yeah, it does look like a set piece, a good left-footed strike, just wraps that around. Keeper doesn't even move. He went near post on the keeper's side and had enough whip on it that it uh, smashed into that uh, left-hand corner. Xerxes gets signing of the season. Leon Bailey, the young player of the season. You forget he's only 22 sometimes. And it is pretty much our full-strength lineup or our usual lineup that makes the team of the season as well. Expectations for next season, they're still only saying qualify for the Champions League. They're not putting any pressure on uh, getting to a title push, but they do want an increase in commercial revenue and to work in the wage budget, which is all fine. I guess that's to be expected. Squad dynamics, Radiki, Bender, and Aaron Giz, the team leaders. You'd probably think Bender would maybe leave during the offseason, given how upset he's been about his playing time throughout the course of the year. But a thoroughly enjoyable save. I've enjoyed our one season at Bayer Leverkusen quite a bit. I think this is one of those saves, though, that like you'd want to commit to four or five seasons if you're going to do it for yourself, just to try and see what actually happens with a lot of these wonder kids if they do go on to become leading players in world football. But it's very... like this baseline squad or the initial squad they have is more than capable of challenging at the top end of the Bundesliga. It's just keeping everyone happy has really been the only concern that we've had to worry about and of course the finances but really that's a boardroom decision more than your own. Well like I said at the start of the episode all good things do have to come to an end. I've very much enjoyed this one season one to save. If you've got suggestions of other one season one to save you want to see before the release of FM21 drop them down in the comment section below. I do take on as much feedback as I can for future content on the channel but more than anything I just appreciate you guys watching. As always I've been Sean and I'll see you all again in the mixer.